Yo, what's up guys, Tim here, welcome back to another video and today we have top 10 winter designer list. Now, oh my god, it feels good to be back. I'll try to upload more and more and more as time's allowed. I'll try not to be gone for a whole month again, so I'll try to keep the uploads more consistent. But without further ado, let's jump right into 2019's top 10 winter list, starting off with the number 10 spot. Number 10 spot, we have a fragrance from Dior, and the only reason this one is at the number 10 spot is because it's not the most wearable of fragrance for me here in Las Vegas. If you live in colder conditions, this one might be more practical for you, but for me, not so practical, but still a very, very awesome scent. That's why it's in the list. So number 10 spot is Dior Om. Parfum. Now this one, I describe it as the grandpa or the godfather of your own fragrances. This one is rich, it's masculine, it's more heavy on the leather. The Iris 5 is really toned down, like the lipsticky part of the Iris is very toned down. It's really not a metrosexual type of fragrance like Dior Homme Intense or Dior Homme could be. This one is masculine. Leather, masculine, pretty much a domination of senses and Oh, it's just so strong. This one, every time I smell it, I always feel like, man, I really cannot pull this off today. It is just too strong. Even in the dead of winter time, I still fear wearing the Euro Parfum at times. I wear it at home though, to enjoy on my own. I do like the smell, I just find the versatility a little lacking. That's why it's at number 10 spot. But in terms of just the smell alone, this thing is really good, niche quality. And in terms of performance, this one is by far one of the most beast mode designer fragrance that you can find out there in the world right now. This thing does not come off unless you take a shower. Like seriously, you can wear this for 30 plus hours and it would not come off you. You would have to take a shower to get it off. That's how strong it is. And that's also one of the other reasons why you can't really wear it in most situations because it is a one spray fragrance that even though it's one spray, it's still too strong type of fragrance. So this one, extremely artistic, love this one. It is my favorite from the whole Dior Homme line and I have tried Dior Homme 2020 by the way guys. Really sucks. That one I'm not gonna buy. Just spoiler, I'm not gonna buy that one. And it's a shame what Dior did to Dior Homme because Dior Homme, uh, the original, although I don't really like it all that much, I still much prefer that over the Dior Homme 2020. It really is a no competition. Dior Homme, the original, really destroys Dior Homme 2020. The 2021, it's a shame, man. It really is a shame. Maybe I'll grab a sample. I'll talk about it in one of my videos to you guys in more details. But bottom line, man, Dior Homme 2020, absolute just garbage. Moving on to number nine spot now, we have another Dior fragrance. Now this one, I put it in number nine spot simply because it's not a fragrance that you would think of when you think of winter, but it is a fragrance that is really, really nice for cold season. This one is Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Not the Parfum, the Parfum would have been completely, completely better than this one in terms of just the scent alone, but the performance on the Parfum is sadly very lacking. This one is eight hours plus and it has a richer, more darker and smoother notes than the original Eau de Toilette, which makes it better for the fall and winter time. And again, it's at the number nine spot because it's not a type of scent that you associate with winter. When you think of winter, you don't think Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum or any Dior Sauvage at all. But this one is a very versatile option for those of you who really need a versatile fragrance in your collection for the fall and winter time. That's why I included just one of these extremely versatile fresh fragrance that can work in the cold season. So number nine spot, Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Number eight spot now, we have one from Asaro. This one is Asaro's Wanted. Now Asaro's Wanted is in here and Asaro Wanted by Night is not simply because I find Asaro Wanted already pretty dang strong. This one is very dry, lemon, ginger. It has a very nice Invictus DNA in it, but really spiced up with that lemon and ginger really kind of changed the DNA into its own way, making it its own fragrance. So for those of you who like to say that this is an Invictus clone, you are really, really far off from the truth. This one is very much its own scent. It borrows a little bit from Invictus this. But like I said again, the ginger and the lemon here is so aggressive, so dry. The spice in here just feels very, very masculine, very, very edgy, and it completely changed the whole Invictus DNA to fit its own. I love this fragrance to death, and this one lasts on me 12 plus hours easily with only one or two sprays on. So for the fall and winter time, this one is definitely enough. Now the reason I don't really care too much about the By Night one is because By Night seems a little bit, um, 
I don't know, like it's trying to go towards the warm and syrupy type of fragrance and we already have so many of those in my personal opinion, that's why I don't really gravitate towards that one so much. But a heavy ginger scent in a designer fragrance, we don't have too many of those. So Asara wanted the originator of that sort of edgy ginger lemon spice DNA, works really really well. The By Night, although it's good, it's just a little bit too... I don't know, it's, it's, it doesn't have a really good direction in my personal opinion. I do like the scent, I just like Wanted much, much more and I find Wanted to have a much more defined character. Moving on, we have the number seven spot and this one is actually my scent of the day. This one is Guerlain, L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum. I picked this one up a few months ago, maybe like two, three months ago. I haven't really worn it all too much because I had that long hiatus from the fragrance community. But now that I'm back, I've been wearing this one for the past two, three days and I absolutely enjoy it. I was instantly reminded of why I pulled the trigger on this fragrance despite me not really being into fragrance at the time. I still wanted to own a bottle of this because it just smells so good. Now this one is gonna lead into the direction of a really boozy tobacco cherry vibe. Boozy tobacco cherry fragrance. So it leans along the line of Pure Havana. It's kind of in the same-ish family, but with a Guerlain kind of touch, Guerlain softness in the DNA, Guerlain vanilla. It just smells really, really good. Another really good one from Guerlain is Guerlain L'Homme Ideal Cologne. That one that's sadly been discontinued and replaced with L'Homme Ideal Cool. I am gonna be picking myself a bottle of L'Homme Ideal Cologne because that one is a gem. And before the price shoot up, I highly suggest you guys do the same. This one I think will always be around, which is nice. And you guys should definitely grab a bottle of this. This one to me is the best one that they have, especially for the fall and winter time. If you want something a little bit more creative, a little bit more well put together for a designer scent, this one is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah guys, try this one out. Number seven spot, L'Homme Ideal Eau de Parfum by Guerlain. Number six spot, the last on the bottom five, we have one that is one of my absolute favorite, but it is lower on the list this year because there's a lot of other very creative, very amazing fragrance choices out there. That just shows you how strong fall and winter fragrances are and how interesting they are because there's so many fragrances above this one that I'm about to talk about and this one is an all-star. Now this one, number six spot, Amani Code Profumo. Profumo is really good. It's in my top 10 fragrance to keep for the rest of my life and it still is. I love this fragrance to death. I love the Code DNA, I love the original, I love this one and I love Amani Code Absolute as well. But I haven't worn Absolute enough to really put it in a list. I feel like it's not as fair if I didn't get enough wearing yet. I want to wear a fragrance at least more than 10 times before I include it in a top 10 list like this, which I haven't done so with Absolute yet. But this one, Profumo, tried and true. Very, very amazing DNA. Gets me lots of compliments, especially when I was in a club in Thailand. The original code as well got me tons of compliments when I was in college in Thailand. So this DNA is tried and true. It works. It can be a little bit boring if you've been in the community for so long, if you wore fragrances for a very long time. But for those of you who are just starting off in fragrances or you don't really care if you're wearing a generic type fragrance, this one is one that just absolutely works. Especially if you're younger, I would say 21 to 30, this one is going to be an all-star in your collection, especially if you like to go out at night to bars, to club, out with friends. In the fall and winter time, this one is an absolute monster. I can really, really attest to this. This one made it into my top 10 fragrance I keep for life for a very, very good reason. Love this DNA and you should definitely try this out. It actually makes me a little sad that it's only at number six spot, but you'll see why in a little bit here. So number six spot, Amani Code Profumo. Breaking in our top five spot is Spice Balm Extreme. This one replaces Spice Balm for me. I used to wear Spice Balm quite a bit. I really like the fragrance, but this one with the added vanilla and warmth and amping up the spices, the cinnamon, it's a way better fragrance to me. It's a much, much better improvement to the original Spice Balm. Now, if you own Spice Balm, you can definitely own Extreme. They're not too similar to where you can't own both. They're, they're pretty much their own fragrance. This one just amps up and adds a lot of these warm, rich, gourmandish kind of sweet notes, which makes it better for the winter time than the original, which is better for more fall time. So I love the original so much. This one I love very, very much as well. Much improvement over the original DNA. One of the best flanker this decade, in my personal opinion. The smell is just to 
die for. So if you love the original Spice Bomb, you're definitely gonna find love in Spice Bomb Extreme. The only con to this that I see is the price and that goes with all Spice Bomb fragrance. It never comes down. And even at discounters, you can find this one to still be quite expensive. But in trade-off to that, you get top-notch scent quality, top-notch performance. This one lasts like a beast and projects like a beast. And number three, top-notch compliment getting potential. This one smells extremely mass appealing. It takes what Spice Bomb is, which is spicy, masculine, sexy, and really turn it into a very nice, sexy, sensual date type fragrance. It works extremely well for getting compliments. Girls absolutely love this one. So you're getting a lot for what you pay for. And also, some of you guys might not like the bottle, I love the bottle. It looks so cool. I like that it's not just any stock bottle that you can find like a, you know, like a, the one EDP by Dolce & Gabbana that looks like it's just in a regular stock bottle you can find in China. This one is not so much so. You're getting what you pay for absolutely. Those three points that I just talked about plus kind of the custom presentation that comes with every spice bomb bottle. It really is a scent that screams value in every aspect of the scent from the presentation to the overall quality, so I highly recommend this one. And this is just the number five spot, Spice Bomb Extreme. Next up, number four spot, this one is kind of a personal pick. Uh, I just love this one so much because I love Alorum Sport or Extreme so much, and this one does share some similarities, especially in the Tonka Bean note. And this one, number four, is Prada Lunarosa Black. Now, if Alorum Sport or Extreme was for spring and summertime, this one is a fall and winter version of Alorum Sport or Extreme. It doesn't have the mint that's in Alorum Sport or Extreme, but the Tonka bean in this one, the powderiness in this one is amped up a little more, but it never goes into the direction of being too powdery that, you know, it's off-putting to wear because I don't like overly powdery scents. I feel like a grandma. If I wear an overly powdery scent, this one is never in that territory, so that's really, really nice. The sweetness is just enough. The subtlety is just enough. Being that it's a sweet scent, I love that Prada still retains its theme in fragrances. Prada is known for what? Prada is really, really good at making clean, professional, subtle, yet effectively attractive scent. And they bring those quality into a sweet scent like Luna Rosa Black very, very beautifully. I just love how this fragrance is done. It's a very nice mass appealer that's so subtle that you can wear in any given situation, fall and winter time. Very versatile, you're gonna get tons of use out of this one and this one is a little bit cheaper than Spice Bomb Extreme. That's also another reason why it's at the number four spot. It's very much more versatile than Spice Bomb Extreme, just as high in the compliment factor and also at a cheaper price. So number four spot, Prada Luna Rosa Black. Love, love, love this fragrance. Number three spot. Now, if you think number four spot was a personal pick, this one is a very personal pick. This one, if I was to be very, very subjective, this one would be, you know, maybe at a number six spot or something, but since I just find so much joy, so much excitement, so much just elation from smelling this scent, I really cannot bring myself to put it any lower on the list. And this one, number three spot, is from Izzy Miyagi. This one is Noir Ombre. And this one is so amazing. I describe this one always as this translucent amber. There's this really nice syrupy quality about it mixed with Oh man, it just smells so good. Like a really thick syrupy. You imagine amber having a very nice honey-like texture, like you're picking up a thing of honey and just dripping down your hand. It has that kind of smell. So good, so creative. I love this fragrance so much. I really cannot put it any lower. Although this one is not the most mass appealing scent out there, but it's some of the most creative and niche quality scent out there in the designer world. This one is an absolute bomb of a fragrance. Love this one to death. If you love amber and if you love vanilla in any given capacity, this is one of those scents that you just, just have to try out. Now, don't blind buy, of course. I, I'm not an advocate of blind buy, especially this one, which is more expensive on eBay. You don't want to do that. Find yourself a sample if you can. If not, try to pick this one up on the cheap. It is an amazing scent. Pretty much a scent of the decade. In my personal opinion, if I were to make a top 10 fragrances that was released this decade, this one is gonna be in there, absolutely. It smells so fantastic. It's just on a number three spot simply because it's not the most mass appealing. I mean, not all niche quality scents are mass appealing. Sometimes you just love it for the artisticness and that's pretty much what this scent is. But it's not off-putting, that's not what I'm saying here when I say it's not mass appealing. It's just not mass appealing. It's just normal. It's neutral, 
It's not off-putting. It's not superstar mass appealing. It smells nice. It can potentially get you some compliments. It did get me some compliments, but it's not going to be in the A-list all-star kind of territory, but still a very nice scent overall. Number two spot now, we have Valentino Womo Intense. Now this one, if it wasn't for the release of the number one spot, would have been the number one spot. This one is so many good memories. I'm sure you guys are tired of my bonfire stories, but I keep coming back to that because that was the highlight, the scent memory, the scent that highlighted my experience with Valentino Woman Intense. And I have had some other good experience with Valentino Woman Intense, but the bonfire story is just so, so good. So many compliments that day, and a lot of compliments on all the other days that I partake in bonfires or when I partake in any outdoor kind of group gathering activities. And that's the best time, in my opinion, to wear Valentino Woman Intense is that you need to give this fragrance a lot of room. So I would suggest you wear this outside or to an event where it's a very big hall kind of event. Nothing too close, nothing indoors because this one needs room to breathe. It's very loud, but it's very appealing at the same time. If you're in a small room with someone, it might be a little bit too cloying for yourself and other people. But if you're outside in a dead cold of winter, this one will provide you with all the needed warmth and sensuality and professionalism that you need to pull in those compliments and to pull in those ladies. If you're out there to pull ladies, of course, because this one just smells super sensual, super sweet, elegant. This one takes the Dior Homme Intense DNA and really brought it into the modern era and amped it up with a lot of tonka bean, tones down the leather, tones down the iris, and really makes the scent a mass appealing monster. This is one of the best releases of 2016, and that's saying a lot because 2016 was some of the best year in fragrance release history, and this one being at the top of the list in 2016's best release, that's saying a lot, man. This one is an all-star through and through in the winter world ever since it was released, and it didn't look like it was gonna get dethroned until the number one spot released here. So let's get right to your number one spot right now. But number two spot, Valentino Woman Intense, you absolutely have to try out, especially if you like Dior Woman Intense and you want a more modern vibe and you want something that's very strong projecting but still retains a professional vibe in the wintertime. Moving on, we have number one spot. And this one took the spot of Valentino Woman Intense, just completely like pulled the rug under VUI. But VUI is still great. Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's bad. I just said it was great. It's number two spot for a reason. But this one is number one spot for a good reason as well. And this one is Givenchy's Gentleman EDP. This one is more masculine, stronger, spicier, more dominating than Valentino Woman Intense. Now they do share the same family of scents. They don't smell the same, but if you smell these two side by side, you would agree with me that, all right, they're kind of in the same genre. They don't smell like absolutely the same, but they're definitely in the same genre. And you would use these two fragrances in the same situation. And every time you have two all-star fragrances that are used in the same situation, one of them usually comes out on top. And for me, in my personal opinion, this one, Givenchy's Gentleman definitely flies on top of VUI. Now, Valentino Woman Intense is very smooth, sweet, sensual, very sexy, but this one is just more masculine to me. More masculine, more spicy, has more character, has more depth, has more nuances and more complexity than Valentino Woman Intense. Now, it's not so much more that it eclipses Valentino Woman Intense. That one is also pretty complex in its own right but this one is just more. It's just an overall a more mysterious, dark, masculine, and spicy take on that genre of fragrance. And every time I wear this, I just feel extremely confident. There's no bone in my body that screams like, oh my God, it's a bad day. No, it's a really, really good day when I wear this. It's an amazing day. I feel absolutely gorgeous walking around the mall or walking around outside and it just feels amazing. It's one of those fragrances that boosts my confidence up to the max, and I think it would do the same for you as well. Especially if you like Valentino Woman Intense already, and you're looking for something with a little more depth or a little bit more of a dominating vibe, this one would be the perfect choice for you, and it is my number one spot for 2019's Top 10 Winter List Designer Edition. All right, guys, that's it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm glad that I'm back. I'll be uploading more and more and more in the future. At what capacity, I'm not sure. It's not gonna be daily, of course, because I can't do daily anymore. I don't have time. But I'll try to release at least one or two a week or so just to keep you guys kind of in the loop 
with my life. And before we go today, I'd like to give a shout out to Best Brands Perfume. He's a really good friend of mine. You go check him out. He recently passed 10,000 subscribers and is on his way up. So if you want extra fragrance content, please go check out Best Brands Perfume. All right, guys, that's it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out and bye.